I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Trap House Digital. Maserati Rick in Detroit. Deep. Convertible bird in Miami. Yo. Graduated summa cum laude. Yo. Strip club made a tsunami. Black. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Wish. Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes. No. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Yeah. Sal Magluta with the boat game. <laughs> Falcone with the cocaine. Uh. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Uh. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Uh. Larry Davis from Close uh. Range. The connections he has to homicides in our community are um, something like I've never seen before, quite frankly. Ricky Kelly was charged with eight murders, including government witnesses. The Commonwealth's attorney at the time, Dave Stingle, said he was one of the most frightening people that he'd ever met. Um, however, they ended up dropping the case for fear that more witnesses may get killed. So they send it to federal court where it's harder for names to be released on one count of murder, but still a key witness was murdered. If you're not from the city of Louisville, I'm probably about to tell you a story of the scariest person you never heard of before. Kelly. Ricky Kelly, who once faced more than a dozen murder charges. The Commonwealth attorney seeks the death penalty for accused killer Ricky Kelly. One of Louisville's most notorious killers, Ricky Kelly, is out of prison tonight. Kelly was indicted for eight murders, but never went to trial in any of those cases. A new twist in the case this morning against one of Louisville's most notorious accused killers. A police informant shot execution style with her daughter in the back seat. One of the men she was supposed to testify against gunned down while on home incarceration. Two other victims murdered within two days of each other. Eight murders in all. Blair Kidwell, Duran Cole, John Sanders, Gail Duncan, Charles Lewis, Craig Jones, and LaQuante Jackson. All committed between 1996 and 2006, all cases that had gone cold. That is, until last month when a grand jury indicted Ricky Kelly, charging him in connection with killing all eight victims. Now police say there could have been nine victims. On Thursday, Kelly was indicted for attempted murder in a 2006 crime. The indictment states that Kelly, along with another man, Damon Shanklin, tried to rob, kidnap, and murder Jermaine Williams in August of 2006, and that Williams was seriously injured as a result. That attack took place just one month after the murder of Warren King. That is the most recent killing that Kelly has been charged in connection with. But police now say Kelly wasn't acting alone in that case. Also on Thursday, Stephanie Bivens was indicted for complicity to the kidnapping, robbery, and murder of Warren King. Bivens was already facing charges in the Jermaine Williams case. Even as the connections between different cases emerge, police remain extremely tight-lipped about all of them. Police say they're hoping these new indictments won't be the last indictments in connection with Ricky Kelly. Ricky Kelly has pleaded not guilty to the eight complicity to murder charges that he is facing. He's next due in court on Monday. Stephanie Bivens has been arrested. She's due in court at 8.45 tomorrow morning. As for Damon Shanklin, he is still at large at this hour. Live at the Judicial Center, I'm Steve Tellier, WLKY News. I'm sure a lot of y'all are wondering how we got here. I'm going to catch y'all up to speed, but before I do that, just know that the police in the city wanted Ricky Kelly off the street so bad they let a man who committed a double murder in Fern Park in 2005 and faced capital murder charges free in April of 2011 with time served after he would agree to a manslaughter charge in November of 2010 just for him agreeing to testify against Ricky Kelly. And that still didn't work. But let's go back to 2005 or so. A man has been indicted in connection with eight murders over a 10 year period of time. Metro Police homicide detectives just wrapped up a news conference. Haley Lampert is live at police headquarters with more on these cold case investigations. Haley? Yeah, Vicki and Rick, that suspect was already behind bars on an unrelated weapons charge. Now he's being held on a million dollars bond and facing 13 new charges. 39 year old Ricky Kelly was indicted earlier today on eight counts of complicity to murder. He also is accused of assault, being a persistent felony offender, and drug charges, in addition to robbery and kidnapping in connection with the murder of Warren King. He was killed in July 2006 near Interstate 264 and Virginia Avenue. Kelly is accused in murders dating back to 1990.
1976. That year, Gail Duncan, Duran Cole, and John Sanders were murdered. Two years later, Charles Lewis and Blair Kidwell were killed within two days of each other. In the summer of 2005, Craig Jones and LaQuante Jackson were murdered. Homicide detectives wouldn't comment on how they were able to crack these cases, but say they're relieved they can finally get these families some justice. Obviously, it's a very huge for our department. Uh, you know, we take great pride in, in, uh, in the work that we do, but obviously it's, it's a, a greater impact for the community and the fact that um, this person hopefully will uh, never see the streets again to commit any violent acts. With the way shit started happening to witnesses after the charges, the state couldn't take it, and they were calling help from the big boys. A judge will let prosecutors drop eight murder charges against a Louisville man, allowing for a federal case against him to proceed. Judge Irv Mays made that ruling this morning in the case involving Ricky Kelly. Daniel Kemp is live outside the Judicial Center to explain. Well, Monica, the Commonwealth says they were prepared to go to trial in July, but Ricky Kelly was indicted on the federal level, and he's already been taken into custody by federal authorities. Now, the Commonwealth says letting that case proceed is the option, the better option, for the outcome they want. We'll sustain the Commonwealth's motion to dismiss this case without prejudice, and that's the order of the court. With that ruling, the Commonwealth's case against Ricky Kelly is now closed, allowing for the federal government to take over. Right now, they have the resources and things to go forward with it a little better than we can right now. Kelly was charged with eight murders dating back as far as 1996. Earlier this week, authorities said a federal grand jury indicted Kelly on a single count of committing murder in aid of a racketeering organization stemming from the death of Lawante Jackson in 2005. We were expecting this, but they, it's been prolonged all this time because they had to meet certain, certain statutory uh, guidelines in order to take the case. Commonwealth Attorney Dave Stingle says handling the case federally means federal funds can be used to move witnesses out of state, further ensuring their safety during trial. But Stingle says moving the case through the federal system doesn't necessarily guarantee a better chance of conviction. We do a good job here. Uh, they do a good job. Uh, I'd say that's about the same either way. Uh, they will, though, bring in probably a lot of the factors in all of our murder cases into the, the RICO, the organized crime statute, and that has a lot more bite than state organized crime. This morning, attorneys for Kelly asked for more time. They wanted to respond in writing to the Commonwealth's motion. It was a request the judge denied. From our standpoint, all we wanted was our day in court, a little due process, and all we've really gotten in return from the Commonwealth is gamesmanship. So at this time, that's all we're going to say. The Commonwealth says at any time they can call any of those cases back up on the state level if for some reason they think they need to do so. Now, if convicted, Kelly could face life in prison without the possibility of parole or even the death penalty. He is scheduled to make his initial court appearance in federal court later this afternoon. Live in downtown Louisville, I'm Daniel Kemp for the LKY News. A new twist in the case this morning against one of Louisville's most notorious accused killers. It involves Ricky Kelly, who once faced more than a dozen murder charges. Our Colin Mayfield is live in downtown to explain why Kelly's case is being moved from federal court back to state court. Colin. Well, Karen and Monica, attorney Steve Roman says his client, Ricky Kelly, was prepared to appear in court. but. Nearly 10 years after his alleged crimes, he'll have to wait a little longer to state his case. The case against my client is uh, in federal court, which was set to go to trial in about two weeks, is being dismissed. Now, Kelly was initially charged in state court with murdering eight people over the course of a decade. Fast forward to 2011, that's when all of those murder charges were dropped by the state, and he, he was a uh, indicted by a federal grand jury in a 2005 murder. Now, prosecutors wanted to bring the law down on Kelly, but now things have changed once again. Roman says those federal charges will be dropped this week, and he says that will happen because he believes federal prosecutors just don't have enough evidence. 
I've been doing this over 20 years, and when they have a good case, they'll give you a trial. You know, they don't, they don't prevent you from going to trial when they have a really good case. Karen Monica, our grand jury just uh, issued this indictment yesterday against Kelly, yesterday afternoon, that is. Back to you guys. All right, and Colin, uh, do we know right now when uh, Kelly will next appear in court? Well, he's on a half a million dollars bond right now, and he's expected to be arraigned uh, next week uh, on this day. Just to make sure everybody is keeping up to speed, he was indicted for eight bodies by the state. But in fear of more witnesses dying, they would have the state pick up the case, but only on a single count of murder on some Rico type shit in a situation where they would allege that this particular murder, like many of the murders that Kelly was accused of, was in furtherance of a drug trafficking operation. But that still didn't stop witnesses from being killed. And the feds don't have such a high conviction rate for taking on cases that they can't win. So back to the state it is. But you know they wasn't going to play with him this time. Public Defender's Office accuses the Commonwealth's attorney of not turning over information in a timely manner in the Ricky Kelly murder case. Now, the issue came up in court just after the prosecutor said he will be seeking the death penalty. WLKY Steve Bergen has been following this case. He joins us now with more. Steve? Ricky Kelly was once charged with eight murders. He's been described as a hired gun and enforcer in the local drug trade. Well, we are on the court record in the matter of Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Ricky Lewis Kelly. The Commonwealth's attorney wants Ricky Kelly to pay with his life for the 2005 death of Lawante Jackson. Police say Jackson was gunned down by two men at the Shepherd Square public housing complex and that Kelly was one of them. Federal authorities went after Kelly, but their case fell apart. Before he could be brought to trial, key witness Gregory Sawyers was killed in the 700 block of South Clay Street. Even without Sawyers, the Commonwealth believes it can still make its case. Leland Halbert now is handling the prosecution. He was asked about protecting potential witnesses. We have witness concerns on many of our murder cases. Uh, and it's something that we deal with as an office. We uh, work with LMPD, and in this case, maybe the federal authorities. Finding a public defender who has no connection to anyone associated with Kelly may be a challenge. That's why attorney Amy Hanna says her office needs to see all the evidence. She contends the Commonwealth is dragging its feet. Obviously, this is a death penalty case. The counsel that is available to take this kind of case is limited, but we're doing everything within our power to keep things moving along because we don't want this to be delayed further. According to Halbert, some of the evidence is still in the hands of federal authorities. As for seeking the death penalty, he says this was a murder for hire. Mr. Kelly is a convicted felon um, and has a fairly significant record. Uh, this act is not uh, two people getting in a fight and it ending poorly. This is hunting someone down and shooting them over 10 times. Authorities believe Kelly was paid with cash and or drugs to kill Jackson. Right now, Kelly's behind bars, serving time for other felony convictions. He's set for this murder trial on June 9th. Steve Bergen. WLKY News. The Commonwealth attorney seeks the death penalty for accused killer Ricky Kelly. That was the topic today during a court hearing. He's accused in the 2005 murder of Wante Jackson. The prosecutor calls this a murder for hire case. Steve Bergen has more on today's hearing. Steve? Barrett, at one time, Ricky Kelly was accused of eight murders. This single case against him now has dragged through the courts for five years. After a federal case against Kelly fell apart because a key witness was murdered, the state continues to pursue a conviction in Jackson's death. He was gunned down on South Clay Street. A prosecutor contends it was a murder for hire case and it was to cover up a drug trafficking operation. If convicted, the Commonwealth wants Kelly to face the death penalty. Kelly's attorneys say the fact this case has dragged on so long, along with numerous delays in getting discovery and going from state to federal and back to state court, there are reasons enough not to put the death penalty on the table. It's not Ricky Kelly's fault that he's sitting here right now and this has been going on five years. That's not his, that's not his doing. 
All he's done has been along for the ride, and he's still here with new attorneys. There are legal reasons that a court can exclude a penalty, but I don't think that they are covered by this motion. Judge Angela McCormick Bissick says she'll consider the death penalty arguments and issue a written ruling before the next court date in October. Kelly's trial is scheduled for next spring, but his attorney, Mac Adams, says based on five years of discovery in this case, he doubts the defense will be ready by then. Steve Bergen, WLKY News. Now, just imagine this. You accused of some electric chair type shit. You get indicted for eight bodies where they saying it's a possibility of more by the state. The feds snatch you up for one of them, and you almost certainly facing a life sentence if convicted. They can't convict you, so they send you back to the state. The state is tired of playing with you, so the only payback is your life. So they try to send you to death row. And after about 2,556 days, or seven years, a saga that started sometime back in 2010, by 2017, Ricky Kelly was entering an offered plea on one count of manslaughter after facing death in a cell in multiple ways. He would be sentenced to 10 years in prison, with the Commonwealth Attorney Tom Wise saying this after the plea. The case has been particularly challenging in light of the murder of key witness Gregory Sawyers in July of 2013. Any case where we're not able to go forward with all the witnesses, we have to balance the likelihood of conviction from a jury, which is denied the full picture with the certainty of an immediate conviction through a plea. But the victim's families, witnesses, and some in law enforcement didn't feel the same. I just gave up on justice. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at right now. I just gave up on the justice system. Darlene McNeely had pinned her hopes for justice on a trial that was supposed to start Friday, the Commonwealth versus Ricky Kelly. Kelly was to stand trial for murder in the 2005 death of Lawante B.B. Jackson, but on Monday, Kelly signed a plea deal for manslaughter with a 10-year sentence. 10 years for killing somebody, and we got to suffer a lifetime. McNeely's own son, Deron Cole, was killed in 1996, and Kelly was once indicted in Cole's murder. In fact, Kelly was indicted in eight murders in 2010, but all except Jackson's case would be dropped. The whole system is messed up, and if you had enough evidence to say that the boy done what he did do, then you should never said it if you didn't have enough evidence to take him to trial on it. To get our hopes up high when you came here and said that this who done this, Ricky Kelly, is accused of killing eight people. In the Jackson case, a key witness, Gregory Sawyers, was gunned down in 2013. Prosecutor Elizabeth Jones Brown says she was not happy with the deal. T 10 years is always too little for the loss of a life, but a a sentence on a conviction does not equate to the loss that a family feels. Even if it were a life sentence, it never equates to the loss a family feels. A sentence on a conviction generally equates to the strength of the evidence. It's unclear whether Kelly will ever face a trial in the seven other cases. At this point, I don't know that there's enough evidence to indict them, so obviously they're still open cases within the homicide division of the Louisville Metro Police Department, um, but we don't have, uh, at this point, no. McNeely called Kelly's sentence a pat on the back. He'll be 53 years old when he get out and go on about his business and walk around like nothing's never happened. He still gets to enjoy his life. And Rick, Jennifer, this deal was done with the Jefferson County Commonwealth Attorney's Office, but it's worth noting that at one point this case was in the federal court system, that is until Sawyers, that key witness, was gunned down. Then federal prosecutors dismissed the case and local prosecutors had to re-indict Kelly, bringing us to where we are here today. Live at the Judicial Center, Mark Vanderoff, WLKY News. I just gave up on justice. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at right now. I just gave up on the justice system. Darlene McNeely had pinned her hopes for justice on a trial that was supposed to start Friday. The Commonwealth versus Ricky Kelly. 
Kelly was to stand trial for murder in the 2005 death of Lawante B.B. Jackson, but on Monday, Kelly signed a plea deal for manslaughter with a 10-year sentence. 10 years for killing somebody? And we gotta suffer a lifetime. McNeely's own son, Deron Cole, was killed in 1996, and Kelly was once indicted in Cole's murder. In fact, Kelly was indicted in eight murders in 2010, but all except Jackson's case would be dropped. The whole system is messed up, and if you had enough evidence to say that the boy done what he did do, then you should never said it if you didn't have enough evidence to take him to trial on it to get our hopes up high when you came here and said that this who done this, Ricky Kelly, is accused of killing eight people. In the Jackson case, a key witness, Gregory Sawyers, was gunned down in 2013. Prosecutor Elizabeth Jones Brown says she was not happy with the deal. T 10 years is always too little for the loss of a life, but a, a sentence on a conviction does not equate to the loss that a family feels. Even if it were a life sentence, it never equates to the loss a family feels. A sentence on a conviction generally equates to the strength of the evidence. It's unclear whether Kelly will ever face a trial in the seven other cases. At this point, I don't know that there's enough evidence to indict them, so obviously they're still open cases within the homicide division of the Louisville Metro Police Department, um, but we don't have, uh, at this point, no. McNeely called Kelly's sentence a pat on the back. He'll be 53 years old when he get out and go on about his business and walk around like nothing's never happened. He still gets to enjoy his life. And Rick, Jennifer, this deal was done with the Jefferson County Commonwealth Attorney's Office, but it's worth noting that at one point this case was in the federal court system. That is until Sawyers, that key witness, was gunned down. Then federal prosecutors dismissed the case and local prosecutors had to re-indict Kelly, bringing us to where we are here today. Live at the Judicial Center, Mark Vanderoff. WLKY News. Hello everyone and thank you for staying up a little late with us tonight. I'm Doug Prophet here on the night team. He was released today from the Eastern Kentucky Correctional Complex in West Liberty, Kentucky. WHS 11 night teams Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie have more from one former Louisville Metro police officer who was involved in this case. Taylor. Doug, today David James is a deputy mayor in the Greenberg administration, but he once worked as a narcotic detective for Louisville Metro Police during Ricky Kelly's violent crime spree. James says Ricky Kelly's release concerns him greatly now that he is back on the streets. And off the table. Ricky Lewis Kelly, known as one of Louisville's notorious killers, is free. A free man after serving eight years, five months, and ten days in an Eastern Kentucky prison. Now, do you have any objection to going? Kelly was sentenced to ten years in November of 2017 after pleading guilty to manslaughter in the 2005 death of Loiwante Jackson. But three years before that, he was indicted on eight counts of murder. It concerns me greatly. Uh, he was involved uh, with a lot of bad things that happened here in our city and so to know that he's not in prison anymore is very concerning. The current deputy mayor David James was working as a narcotics detective for Louisville Metro Police. He still remembers the eight murders Kelly was tied to but never faced charges for, including the death of Gail Duncan, a narcotics drug informant who was gunned down in front of her nine-year-old daughter at her home in 1996. The connections he has to homicides in our community are um, something like I've never seen before, quite frankly. Ricky Kelly was connected to the murder of 20-year-old Deron Cole. Cole was a former Eastern High School student who was gunned down back in 2005. However, Kelly was never convicted or charged in Cole's death. In 2017, prosecutors shared they didn't have enough evidence to connect Kelly to any other murders, only manslaughter and the death of one man, Lawante Jackson. In in the criminal justice system, uh, there are people uh, that uh, sometimes have the ability uh, to slip through the system 
and use the law to their side to get away with certain things. James says the only people who should be concerned now that Kelly is free are those who were involved in some of Kelly's illegal activity at that time. And a Kentucky Department of Corrections spokesperson says per state statute, Kelly was required to serve 85% of that 10 year sentence. In studio, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. Known as one of Louisville's notorious killers is free. A free man after serving eight years, five months and 10 days in an Eastern Kentucky prison. Now, do you have any objection to going? Kelly was sentenced to 10 years in November of 2017 after pleading guilty to manslaughter in the 2005 death of Lewante Jackson. But three years before that, he was indicted on eight counts of murder. It concerns me greatly. Uh, he was involved uh, with a lot of bad things that happened here in our city. And so to know that he's not in prison anymore is very concerning. The current deputy mayor, David James, was working as a narcotics detective for Louisville Metro Police. He still remembers the eight murders Kelly was tied to, but never faced charges for, including the death of Gail Duncan, a narcotics drug informant who was gunned down in front of her nine-year-old daughter at her home in 1996. He's accused of eight murders. Now the public's right to know about the case against Ricky Kelly is being being balanced against safety concerns. WLKY's Andy Alcock is live outside the Judicial Center where a hearing was held on that issue today. Andy. Rick, this afternoon, Judge Irv Mays granted a motion from an attorney representing the Courier Journal to intervene in this case. At issue are three discs sealed in the court record in a previously held hearing closed to the public. Under heavy security, Ricky Kelly sat in court for a hearing in his case. Kelly is accused of committing eight murders from 1996 to 2006. Now parts of the case against Kelly are sealed in the court record. The Courier Journal wants to know why or have them publicly released. All we know is that there is, it was a secret hearing and there are some documents and we don't know what they are that are under seal. We have some very serious concerns with regards to security and safety. Last August, WLKY reported a woman named Shannon Thurman is charged in federal court with witness tampering. Specifically, Thurman is accused of using her position in the Department of Public Advocacy to feed Kelly information about a witness who agreed to testify against him for a 2005 murder. The complaint against Thurman states that witness, while in jail, was severely assaulted by several unknown inmates. WLKY has also reported police detectives investigating the case against Kelly have been threatened. The newspaper is arguing the public's First Amendment right to know should prevent the sealing of documents and hearings closed to the public. Every amendment is subject to control and is subject to limitations, particularly when it comes to public safety concerns. Based on broad sweeping statements that safety is at issue, that's not sufficient. Another closed door hearing was scheduled today in the case, but Judge Irv Mays postponed it and gave lawyers for both the defense and Commonwealth until Thursday to respond to an 11 page memo submitted by the newspaper's attorneys. I'm not making any decision until the Commonwealth has their opportunity to respond. Judge Mays says he'll make a decision about whether or not to publicly release the sealed elements in the court file in this case next Monday. However, he also said he will not make public the events of the closed court hearing already taken place in this case. And finally, he also said that the, all of the elements in this case, everything, all the evidence will re be released to the public on April 1st. Reporting live at the Judicial Center downtown, Andy Alcock, WLKY News. Thank you, Andy. Now, so far, no trial date has been set for Ricky Kelly. However, Judge May says he is targeting June or July. Kelly's attorney, Misty Clark, says that she'll likely try to uh, sever some of the eight murder charges from each other so that there are separate trials, but she's waiting for all the Commonwealth's evidence to be released in the case before making that decision. A man considered one of Louisville's most dangerous killers walked out of prison a free man. The Department of Corrections says Ricky Kelly served out his sentence and was released yesterday. He struck a plea deal in 2017 for the 2005 death of La Juante Jackson. Kelly faced the death penalty in the case, but the plea deal called for him to serve just 10 years in prison. 
Kelly's release has left many people wondering, how does this happen? WDRB's crime and courts reporter Jason Riley joins me now to break down this case a little bit more. Jason, give us a more in-depth look at who Kelly is and why he's considered to be such a notorious killer. So Kelly ended up going back to state court on one murder case, but got it amended down, and he was facing the death penalty, but got it amended down to manslaughter, uh, you know, 10 year sentence and 85%. So can you explain in a little more detail about how Kelly was able to get released already? It was a 2017 plea deal, 10 years to serve, and here we are in late 2023, and he's already out. So for those at home who may not know, how does that work? Well, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't conv convicted of murder. He was convicted of manslaughter, and there was a lot of uh, people angry about that at the time. But prosecutors felt they wanted to get something on this guy. They didn't have a lot of physical evidence, so, so they got him for manslaughter, and that has an automatic serve out of 85, uh, 85%. And he had already served some time from his original arrest, some time in jail, so that counted to go along with what he, he has served now. And he's basically just served out. So nothing special has happened here. The, the statute, the law has been followed and he's served out now. He's a free man and nothing, nothing different was done uh, to get him out earlier. All right, thanks Jason. You'll find more of our coverage on this case right now on WDRB.com.